Hi there. I've been thinking. I'm going to try something different today. Some time ago on an earlier video, I mentioned that I was gradually working my way through Patti Smith's music catalogue. And I arrived a few days ago at 2004 to her album called Trampin. And I thought what I'd do today is just give you my take on that album. I'm somewhat hesitant to do this because I'm not a music critic, I'm not a musician, I'm not a, an historian of music. I'm no expert in this at all. But what I can do is just tell you what I think about it. So here goes. The first general comment I'd like to make about the album is that it's a much more modern production than I'd been used to listening to in a, her earlier albums. It's kind of crossed that threshold into the modern era of production. And what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, I mean that it's very crisp and clean. You can hear every individual musical instrument and, and Paddy's vocals very clearly. It's also, if you can imagine that there's a, a musical landscape or a music scape, if you like, each instrument has its place in that three-dimensional space. It's to the left or it's to the right or it's uh, back or it's forward. And those, uh, those change as the song progresses. But those are a couple of things then that I think uh, is characteristic of a modern production technique. The first song on the album is called Jubilee. And it's uh, basically a, a slower rock song, great guitars. And, and great guitars is a feature of this whole album, in fact. And it's a song that's, I suppose, talking about that biblical concept of the Jubilee year, when every seven years, uh, the people, the Hebrew people were meant to forgive the debts of those around them. And it was a clean, a fresh start every time. And so it's about that and about its failure to arrive, I suppose. It's about freedom. And it, it for me, it's very reminiscent of the 70s, even though the production style is very modern. I think musically, it sort of has a, a backward look to the 70s, like a protest song. The second song is called Mother Rose, and it is a beautiful rock ballad. It's beautifully sung, beautifully played. It's a very moving song about, I think, a mother and a daughter, and the way that relationship reverses over time, how at the beginning the mother is caring for the daughter, and then at the end the daughter is caring for the mother. And it has the most beautiful bass solo in the middle of it. It, it builds emotionally, and at times Patty speaks the lyrics as she often has done in the past. A very emotional, very moving song. Beautiful. The third track is called Stride of the Mind. And I, I struggled to know what that song lyrically was about, although there are obviously Islamic references. It's a very solid, simple rock song. Again, again very reminiscent of the 70s. The third song, uh, Cartwheels, is another absolutely beautiful ballad. It's less towards the rock end of the spectrum, more towards the folk end of the spectrum. It's very dreamy. It has kind of contrapuntal guitars playing through it. And again, we have a mother-daughter theme here. And I think what we see is a mother watching her daughter running ahead of her in the natural world with her friends, enjoying the beauty of the natural world. But in the mother's heart, there's a sense that she's witnessing the end of innocence, that this age is going to pass. Again, a very, very moving song. With song number five, we come to something completely different. This is Gandhi. And it's a tribute, 
to Gandhi and other freedom fighters like him. There's frequent mention of King, Martin Luther King. It's over nine minutes long. It's very plaintive. Much of the lyrics is spoken. And Patty here descends into a growl that is quite visceral and kind of reminiscent of Jim Morrison in Roadhouse Blues. It's a really heartfelt song, and I, I guess that's true of much of this album, that it's heartfelt. The next song, track number six, is called Trespasses, and it's another beautiful ballad, and these ballads just keep getting better and better. Again, it's a somewhat folk-style song, acoustic, beautiful acoustic bridge. The best vocals I've ever heard from Patti Smith. I haven't listened to the subsequent albums yet, but up to this point, this whole album is the best I've ever heard Patti Smith sound, and this is the best of that. If you ever doubted that Patti Smith could sing, listen to this song. It seems to me to be a song about the end of life, about the debts that we leave behind us, and about the regrets that we leave behind us. And also, though, the, the, the kind of sign of hope is that those behind them are willing to pick them up on our behalf. The next song, uh, number nine, is uh, sorry, number eight, is called Cash. This perhaps made less of an impression on me. It seems to be a song about taking sides, about making a commitment to the cause. And in fact, what we have to give is our time, our life. That is what we're cashing in when we make these decisions, these choices, these commitments. So it's basically asking us, where do we want to spend our cash, our life, our time? The next song, track nine, is called Peaceable Kingdom. It's the most modern sounding track on the album with a, a, a sort of underlying synth on at the beginning and the end of the song. It's a slow rock ballad. It's a kind of a story being told here and it's the most story-like of the songs that I've heard from Patti Smith. And it's absolutely beautiful. The vocals on this track are sublime. I did look up this song and try to find out a bit about the lyrics. There's a, there's a line that runs through this about the lion and the lamb lying down together in a time of peace. And most of the people who interpret these lyrics see this as a reference to society, how we need to return to a peaceful society after all the chaos and war that we've lived through. But before I read that, I had my own understanding of this song and I'm going to stick to it. Because it seems to me it's a much more personal song than that, and that it's a, about a relationship between a man and a woman. How once that relationship was strong and steady and peaceful, but things have fallen apart and they're now somewhat at war with each other. And they long for that time when the lion and the lamb can again lie down together. So I think it's a song about relationships, breakup and loss. Maybe Patti Smith didn't have that in mind, but that's what I hear when I hear this song. The next song, number 10 on this album, is perhaps the most challenging song to listen to. It's called Radio Baghdad. Now, this album came out in 2004, so this is after the US invasion of Iraq. And basically... It's a lament for Baghdad about ba what Baghdad once was in terms of the history of the world and what it's now become. There are Middle Eastern motifs floating through the music here. Much of the lyric is spoken, as Patti Smith often does. The music is often raw and hard hitting. The song's over 12 minutes long, and sometimes the sound is, is, is chaotic, which seems to me to actually reflect 
the the war that's going on in that area at that time it, the music's even menacing sometimes it, the song has one of the greatest lyrics that i've ever heard and it's this we created the zero but we mean nothing to you baghdad is the cradle of civilization basically where babylon once stood and uh, the song is about the loss of that, the loss of all the, 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 the science, the wisdom, the knowledge that arose from that place that we now overlook, we forget, we ignore. All we want now from this land of Eden where Eve once trod, all we want now is the oil that we drill out of the land. There's a wailing saxophone through this at some points. There's Patty's vocals descend to a, a barely audible whisper at times, but then they rise again to almost a guttural, almost non-verbal scream. Then we shift into these chugging guitars with a game with some Eastern motifs, Eastern melodies. And then Patty begins to shout, to shout, run away, run away. It's the most astonishing song and not, not particularly easy to listen to. It's not one that's going to, you know, you're not going to go away humming this song, but it is deeply visceral and quite amazing. The final track on the album is the title track called Trampin, and that's a cover of a traditional gospel song. And musically, it's the most simple of all the songs here. It's a piano accompanying Patty's vocals. And playing the piano is uh, Jessie's daughter, uh, Patty's daughter, Jessie, who's just 16 or 17 years old at the time of playing. Again, Patty's vocals are so heartfelt here. And the piano is beautifully played. I would only wish that they had maybe just dropped the level of the piano just a little bit. Not much, just a little bit. It's just for me, just a little bit too high. So there you have it, an album that's over an hour long, that ha has songs that uh, sort of hark back to the 70s musically and sometimes lyrically with a strong political and uh, kind of protest feel. But it has rock songs, it has beautiful ballads. It has long, almost formless, visceral poems. This album is a gem. And if you haven't heard it, heard it or listened to it, think about doing so.